Good morning. What a lovely morning it is. Hello to all of you and thank you for joining me for today's English Live, which will be looking at describing frightful creatures. So it's our Key Stage 1 to Key Stage 2 lesson as part of my Gothic Horror Week. Um, if you're in Key Stage 3 or if you're younger or older, uh, you're very welcome to join in with this lesson today. So let's start off with as we always do, some information. So if you are new to English Live, I know we do have some um, new learners joining us today. You can download a document, or your parents can download a document that looks like this from my Facebook group called English Live Resources. And there are six different tasks on there that are aimed at different learning styles and, and different things that motivate different learners. So there's something for everyone there. And that will extend and consolidate your learning after the lesson. It's also the same place where you can upload photos and videos of any of the work that you complete as a result of today's lesson. And it's lovely for you to give feedback to other people on their fabulous work too. So... Time for some shout outs. So uh, Mummy English, my mum, who's about 35, 40 miles away, um, every day during the live lessons, she watches the chat, the live chat intensely um, to try and pick out the names of people who are asking for a shout out. So um, big hello Yay. to Ella Whitfield. Um, she would like a shout out because she loves my lessons. Thank you very much. Uh, hello to Tilly in Liverpool and um, she hopes I'm having a nice day. Tilly, I hope you're having a nice day too and congratulations on that fabulous gothic horror story that you wrote. I, my mind was blown, it was fantastic. Hello to, to Scarlett and the dogfish. <laughs> to uh, Xavier who is seven in um, Cardiff. To Dia who is now in Reading. Shout out to Jessica Melville-Smith, she says hi. Hi to you. Uh, to Freya and her bestie Imogen, big shout out to you two. Hello to Michael, who is five in Kettering, and this is his first lesson. Welcome. And to Natasha, who is 11. To Bobby and Susan in Hull. Hello to Harini. Hello to Phoebe, who is 10 in Wooten. To Melanie in Doncaster. And to Esme and Frida, who would like a shout out for their mum and dad, who both work for the NHS. Thank you for everything that you do. And um, Mackenzie, who is 10, Jamie, who is 13, and not great at English, but is getting much better thanks to these lessons. Well, that's what they're here for, to keep you doing a bit of English, learning a little bit of English, and making sure that you're going to be ready for when you eventually go back to school. And uh, hello to Arihant, who is 10, and um, Arohi, who is 8, who love the lessons. Thank you very much. And hello to Ria, who doesn't have the live chat facility, but she wanted a shout out too. So we start every lesson with a starter activity and it's just designed to get your brain moving a little bit and to uh, wake that brain up because it's 11 o'clock in the morning in lockdown. Uh, you may have only just got out of bed. I've been up for hours, but this will hopefully wake you up today. So I'm asking you, how many words can you make from the letters in terrifying? Okay, so I'm gonna slide my makeshift board across. Here we go. Let's take these ones down. I'm going to give you about a minute and a half to do this. Um, you can either write them down, pop them in the live chat, discuss them with the people around you if you're watching with siblings or adults, or you can just shout them out at the screen. Or if you want to, I'm going to put the music on. You can just have a little dance around the lounge or the kitchen, wherever you're doing the lesson. OK, good luck. Play. <laughs> You can't wait on their affirmation. 
You can't wait for their approval. You can't wait for their support. But sometimes you just got to run and look behind you and say, everybody who wants to run, run. But I can't stop running because you're not running. Listen, listen to me. Hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life is chasing it. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life will believe in you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know you can do it, you're going to do it all by yourself. today's lesson. I'm just going to slide that across here. Uh, so we have been looking at gothic horror this week, which is a really fascinating genre that um, is not too dissimilar from Halloween, um, but there are more particular elements of gothic horror that, um, that appear in gothic literature and gothic art and so on. So for the key stage uh, two to three learners that have been doing the lessons all week, you can use this lesson to develop your description of your characters that are going into your gothic horror story that you've been working on this week. If you're a younger learner or if you've just joined for today's lesson, uh, you can just use this lesson uh, to brush up your skills of describing things, okay? So we're gonna be looking at interesting words, sensory language and using similes. So the first thing I'd like you to do today to get your mind channeled in the right direction, I'd like you to say hi to Fluffy. Hi Fluffy. <laughs> so um, I'm going to pop the music on for 30 seconds and I'd like you to come up with some descriptive words for our friend Fluffy. Okay now he might have a gentle sounding name but he is a terrifying gothic werewolf so you're trying to look for words that describe fluffy um but also looking for words that make him sound terrifying okay as always you can write them down pop them in the live chat shout them out of the screen or just dance to the music it's entirely up to you off you go good luck Lovely Sarah. Salty. <laughs> Vicious, scary, bulky. I like that. Describing what he physically looks like. Ripped. Man eating. Hi, Chitza. Patronizing. Interesting. Evil, ferocious, frightening and terrifying. Well done, Alex. Sinister. Pause. Okay, so you're going to have now a small bank of words that you could use to describe a frightful creature. Well, what we're going to do now is to create our own frightful creatures. Now, I'm going to give you some that you can use if you feel like you don't have a good imagination, although you probably do. Um, or you can come up with completely your own idea for a frightful creature. So, 
I'm going to give you a little bit of time to have a think about this. Okay. I've got three here that we can, that you could possibly use for your, your own if you don't want to come out of your own one. So in Gothic horror, there are supernatural creatures. Okay. So things like, I put it here and you'll see it when I move the board closer, monsters, ghosts, witches, vampires, and werewolves. And if you're a big Harry Potter fan, there's lots of different creatures in Harry Potter that have supernatural powers. And those are the sorts of characters that we see in Gothic literature. So I'd like you to come up with your own one. You can base it on one of these characters. You can come up with your own one. I'd like you to pick a frightful creature or create your own. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds with the music on just because I don't want to rush you. But I'd like you to make sure you can visually see that character in your head. And you might want to think of either a name for that type of creature or a name for that particular creature. Like Fluffy was a werewolf, but he had a name, Fluffy. And if you want to, you can have a think in your imagination what that character might move like, might sound like. Um, where do they live? What things do they like? What things don't they like? Have a really good think about that. And if you're with somebody doing this lesson, discuss your ideas together. Okay, good luck. Play. So remember, you can have a think about these ones if you don't want to create your own. Combine Harvester, Alexandra, that's an interesting idea. Alina's going to do a werewolf. Jessica's going to do Dracula. You can't wait on their affirmation. You can't wait on their approval. You can't wait on their support. Trekker the troll. Fabulous. Listen, listen to me, hear me. Ooh, the spiky snake with 20 feet fangs. You can't stop believing in Great ideas. Because somebody in your life is You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know you can do it, you're going to have to do it all by yourself. Pause. Okay, fabulous. So... By now, hopefully, you'll have an idea in your mind of what your character is going to be like. So what do they look like? And you might have had to think about how they move or a little bit about, about them. So their name, where they live, what they do, what they like, don't like, and so on. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do this next activity now. But this is something you can do in future when you're generating ideas for a character. Or it's something you can do after the lesson. Or if you are watching on catch up, then you can pause the video and very quickly do this. Parents, this is a great, easy thing to do when you're helping your children do some creative writing. So you just need to draw the outline of a gingerbread man. And what you do, you write words on the inside of the gingerbread man that might describe your character's personality, their feelings, things like that. And around the outside, you would draw things that a scene and relevant on the outside. So what they look like, um, where they live, who their family are, do they have any pets, all of those sorts of facts about your character. So it's a really good way of giving your character depth so that when you are writing about them and you're using vivacious verbs, you can pick the right ones to really reflect who your character is. So I'll pop that down. Right. So now you've got your idea in your head of your character. We need to come up with some words specifically related to your character. So we're going to create quite a big word bank here. I'll go through it with you and I'm going to give you about two minutes to do this. As always, if you are watching on Catch Up, you're very welcome to pause the lesson whenever you need to. 
So you're going to come up with three brainstorms. You can do them as lists or mind maps, whatever works best for you. We can just shout them out at the screen. So the first thing you're going to think about, and I will bring this closer, is what does their voice sound like? They might be a creature that doesn't talk, but they will have some way of communicating, I expect. Possibly, It's a slim chance you've picked somebody who's silent. Um, so I've written here grunting, howling, whispers, yelp, crying, screeching, boom. And you can come up with some ideas specifically related to your character. Then you can move on to what does their hair or skin look like? And my ideas here are cracked, glossy, wrinkled, tangled, translucent, great word, emerald and pockmarked. You will come up with your own ones to describe either their skin or their hair or both. And how do they move? This one's really important because you will be able to reflect this in the writing. And um, instead of they walked somewhere, you'll be able to say whether they um, dragged their feet or if they, they rushed somewhere. So I've got glide, drag, rush, sweep, um, stumbled, amble, prance, stagger. You can come up with your own list. Okay, I'll pop the music on again. Same rules as always apply. Come up with three fantastic word banks. Okay, good luck, off you go. Play. Some fantastic ideas coming through on the live chat. But if you're not using the live chat, that's absolutely fine. Um, you'll have your own way of sharing and recording your ideas. Thank you. 
Okay, so at this stage now, I'm hoping that you have got a lovely big bank of words that will describe what your character, I'm going to move this back here so we can see it in the background. Sorry about the reflection, that's my uh, windows here. Uh, so what they sound like, what they look like, and how they move, okay? So before I move on, uh, let's have some shout outs. So Mummy English, who have you got for a shout out? Let's see. So hello to Sarisha and Amalia in Stratford. Hello to you. Hello to Sarah in Brockworth, who is nine, and she goes to Castle Hill. Um, hello to Amalia, who is seven. Um, Paolo Marsh, who is six, and it's his first lesson today. Welcome, Paolo. Hello to Yasmin. Hello, Yasmin. Shout out to Claudia, who is 14 tomorrow. Happy birthday for tomorrow. I hope you'll be joining me for Spellathon tomorrow on your birthday. Hello to Tilly Walton on Thames, who loves all of the lessons, but she's especially loved the gothic horror ones. Well, so have I. It's been such fun this week, hasn't it? Uh, and that's the end of those shout outs. Right. We're going to move on now. We are going to create our own similes. Now, I've only ever spoken about similes before in my Key Stage 2 to Key Stage 3 lessons. So if you're a Key Stage 1 learner and this sounds too difficult or too confusing, you can just sit and listen. But I think we can tiptoe our way into it today. And um, by the end of this lesson, you're going to come up with some fantastic similes about your frightful creature. So a simile, what is a simile? Well, it's a descriptive figure of speech in which one thing is compared with another. And I've got four examples for you here. He was as tall as a mountain. They were like loved up lovebirds. She was as fierce as a lion. He stared like a gargoyle. So uh, those are my examples of similes. Hopefully you'll be able to recognise from that that um, as and like are the two words that are a bit of a giveaway that a simile is being used. So I'm going to ask you to come up with between one and four similes about your frightful creature. But I have done... Um, some sentences for you and you just need to fill in the gaps now if you did a really big big word bank you're going to be absolutely fine this is going to be easy peasy for you you can just pick out from the words you came up with earlier actually let me put them around this way so it makes sense live lessons it's like this in school as well isn't it you have to wait for your teacher to get organized sometimes okay so where there is a line I would like you to put an adjective, okay? And where there's a dot, 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 that's where I want you to come up with your own idea. And this red one down here is just go for it and come up with something crazy of your own. So the first one, their whispering voice terrified me. It was like nails down a chalkboard. Sounds horrible. So you'd be comparing their voice to the sound of nails being scratched down a chalkboard, which is not a nice sound, okay? Their crumbling skin was as revolting as decaying meat. Come up with your own one. Do better than I did. I'm just thinking these up on the spot. <laughs> um, they stumbled towards me like a hungry zombie. And then this creature stood before me was, you can either come up with a simile or a really cool description or anything you like. That one's your absolutely free range sentence. You can do one, two, three or four sentences. I'm gonna give you two minutes to do it. If you need to pause the video, if you're watching on catch up, that's fine. Um, and if you need to, you can always come back to this at the end of the lesson. And if you're not a quick writer, you can just write down the words and not the full sentence um, if that's helpful for you. OK, good luck. Play. You can't wait for their affirmation. You can't wait for their approval. You can't wait for their support. Sometimes you just got to run and look behind you and say, everybody wants to run, run. But I can't stop running because you're not 
Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life is chasing you. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life is believing in you. Chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know what you do, it's going to happen all by yourself. towards me like a ram. Their husky voice terrified me. It was like being impaled in the head by crocodile teeth. Fantastic. <laughs> Skin as rough as sandpaper. Their thick skin was as revolting as, revolting as smelly blue cheese. sentences in the live chat and hopefully these structured sentences have given you the opportunity with some really cool sentences that you could use either in your gothic horror story if you're one or um, in just a description of a frightful creature. Uh, now, there are lots of fantastic activities for you to do on the task sheet today to try and keep things a bit fun and to give you a little bit of a feel for gothic horror. But if it is a genre that you like the sound of, you can always go back and uh, look at the lessons from earlier in the week. Are you gonna come and say hello now? Come on, do you want this? So, <laughs> if you're new to English Live, you wouldn't have met him before, but this is Bertie, our star of the show. Uh, usually comes in to say a quick hello on the end, don't you? Uh, but he's been a bit shy this week. He's been a bit frightened by the gothic horror. <laughs> right, Bertie, say bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Good boy. Okay. <laughs> Good boy. There you go. You can have your treat now. So uh, we are at the end of the lesson. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. Don't forget that tomorrow we have the Spellathon, but it's a Gothic edition. So there are lots of frightening words and words relating to the Gothic horror genre. And I've got a fabulous uh, array of lessons lined up for next week that I'm really looking forward to teaching you. Thank you again for joining me and uh, have a lovely afternoon. Take care. Bye bye.